Approximately 500 years ago, there was a certain Jew who sold oil in the shuk. He had a stall in the marketplace, and there he sold oil. He shared a wall with his neighbor, a non-Jew, who sold perfume in the market. Unfortunately, economically times were tough. And this non-Jew, the perfume salesman, was very distressed. Why? Because he wasn't selling anything. And he was even more aggravated to see all day long customers coming in and out of the Jew who sold oil next door. He thought to himself, what is the secret to this Jew's success? So one evening when everyone had left the shuk already, the market already, he took a hand drill, he drilled a hole through the wall that divided his stall from the stall of his neighbor. The next day, throughout the day, he kept his eyes on the Jew. He looked through the hole to see if he could discover any reason, any secret to the success of this Jew. He didn't find any. But what did happen is he saw at the end of the day how the Jew counted up his money he counted along. How he took that money and he put it in a certain red pouch. He paid attention to all the details, put it in his jacket pocket, and he left. Suddenly, the non-Jew had an idea. He ran out into the streets and screamed, Help! Help! Police! Police! I've been robbed! The police came running. What's the matter? He says, Each day, you know, I take up all the money that I've accumulated and I put it in, in a certain red pouch after counting it. And this is what the pouch looks like. And this is the amount of money I counted today. And suddenly it's gone missing. And he says, Not only that, I think I know exactly who took it. And you can still catch him. He's not far. They said, No, quickly. Where? He says, If you run down the street that way, I think he just went that way. So they ran after him, and they after apprehended this Jew. He says, what's the meaning of this? What's the matter? They quickly did a search of his body, and there they found the red pouch precisely as the non-Jew had described it, with the exact same amount of money inside as he had said would be there. Immediately the Jew was taken under arrest. Word sped throughout the town. It was all anyone could talk about. A huge court case would soon take place, the Jew against the non-Jew. In charge of this case was the noble of the region, and he had a tough call ahead of him. At the end of the day, it really was one person's word against another person's word. On the day he was set to make a final decision, the decision was burdening him, and he decided to go for a walk to catch some fresh air, maybe clear his head. As he was walking, being that this was the talk of the town and everyone was just involved with you know, wondering what would happen. He saw a group of Jewish boys that were playing mock trial. And what was the trial that they were mock trialing? Well, none other than the case of the oil merchant and the perfume merchant. The one child who ca carried the role of the judge was named Yehuda. And he had the friends, one to play the oil merchant, one to play the perfume merchant, one to play the, the defense attorney, one to play the prosecuting attorney. The child listened as they gave their cases over and he overheard as his friends say, oh, no one can ever call this. This is too impossible to, to, to come to a conclusion on. The young boy Yehuda thought for a moment. Meanwhile, the judge was watching all along. Hmm, that's not true. I believe there is a very definitive way for us to know who is telling the truth. So the judge in this mock trial, Yehuda said, it's very simple. Bring the money over here. If it's true that the Jew is telling the truth, that the money is his, being that he works with oil all day long, chances are there's oil on his hands and that, that he obviously touches the money with his hands, there will be oil on the money. We simply need to put the coins in water and see if any oil floats to the surface. The judge was listening all along and he was astounded. Indeed, that evening when it came to making the final call on the decision, he too summoned the evidence, the money, submerged it in water, and lo and behold, the oil flowed to the top. The Jew was saved, and the non-Jew found to be the criminal and the liar at the end of the day. Who was this young child that in his brilliance came to such an amazing way of concluding this case, it was none other than Yehuda, the future Maral of Prague.